Now, okay, here we go, part three. Uh, once again, everyone, there's my name and that is my cell phone number. Uh, everybody is invited to call whenever you have a color question, regardless of the type of color you use. I will try to answer questions as honestly and straightforward as I can. Oh, I just made myself a nice warm cup of coffee. It is unusually cold in New York today. Usually by the end of March, um, temperatures are in the mid, mid to high 40s. Today it's 22 degrees when I got up this morning outside to take my dog out for a walk. Unusually cold. Okay, now um, also, uh, if you want to send me an email, please send it to Tom at the Worldwide Hair Colorists .org. Uh, Remember that's .org, not .com. Uh, um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit more information about uh, that organization at the end of the presentation. Here we go. Whoops, I jumped too many there. Part three, here's what we're going to talk about. We're gonna talk about diluting color and the different ways that you can do it and why you do it. We're going to talk about peroxides. We're gonna talk about um, alkalizers and we're gonna talk about damage to the hair. Um, I had a question earlier and it was from, I forget who it was from, asking me why I'm doing a nine part series uh, when I could have done this. Um, much in, in only three or four parts. And it's very simple. I'm trying to do in-depth information about each segment. And um, there's no way I could get everyone to sit still for, for three six hour segments at least. So I decided to do it instead as a nine, nine segments and, and um, just give you a break after an hour, hour and a half. Um, Oh, um, it's snowing wherever Vincent is, and Annette says it's colder than in Maine. Okay, here we go. Diluting color. Now, first of all, any color can be diluted with clear. And clear simply means no color. That's all clear means. And it can be in any base. It can be permanent. It can be deposit only. It can be a toner. It can be any base color that you want um, because there are, uh, there are clear is available in all of them. It has different names in each one, but we'll go over that as we go along. And I want to start with this picture. Now, first of all, this picture, look all the way over here to the left. This is medium neutral brown 3n remember we're on the american level system and in the american level system level three um, is medium brown and uh, 3n means three neutral which is medium neutral brown then what i've done is i have diluted it in each one of these swatches now each one of these swatches was processed for 45 minutes uh, with with a 20 volume developer and they were done on white virgin white hair and what i've done over here as you can see the color formulas um, um i put in this particular like in 1125 it's 20 grams of clear and 40 grams of the original 3n it was processed with 20 volume developer and you could see it's a slightly lighter version of, of, the, uh, of the full strength 3N. And then look at each one as it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And look at this final one here, number 1620. 1620 was made up of 55 grams of clear and only five grams of um, 3N. And look at how light it is. So consequently, any color can be diluted. Now, this was permanent color that I diluted. You can do the same thing with deposit-only colors, with, with uh, um, toners, with anything you want by simply adding clear. Now, in this case, the clear that I added in each one of these cases was XL cream. Now, you do not need to have XL cream. I'm sure that your 
your color line, whatever color line you use, has some sort of a clear or just a lightning cream. Not a lightning cream with persulfates, but just a simple lightning cream. Um, otherwise, it would bleach and it would destroy the dye. So, please take care of this. Now, I want to show you. This is, and I started here, see here, number 2105 is four red orange. So this is full strength um, four red orange. It's permanent hair color once again. And this time I diluted it once again with, uh, with clear, but in this case, it's XL cream. And XL cream is just simply a 1.5% ammonia a lightning cream that has no per, no persulfates mixed with it. And here you can see the first formula is I diluted it and it's it's a full, now remember these were processed for uh, uh, 45 minutes and they were processed with 20 volume developer. So this first one is you can see it and you can see it's lighter, then it gets even lighter because I intermixed it with equal parts of XL, whoops, what happened? Equal parts of XL cream. And in this case, number 2108, I mixed only 15 grams of the original um, 4RO with 45 grams of clear. And, and you can see how much lighter it became. So any color, regardless of whether it's permanent, deposit only, anything at all, it can be diluted by using some form of clear. Now, what I've done here was I wanted to show you something. Oh, Donna, oh, wait a minute. I have a bunch of questions here. Let me see. What, um, what chapter does this correlate to? Oh, you're asking about the book. Um, oh, guys, damage to the hair. Um, this is a combination of a bunch of different things, uh, Julie, uh, different things. Uh, Siri is asking, can we use and mix any permanent color line clear with, if with color line that not have permanent clear in color collection? Um, I think I understand the question, Siri. The question is, can you mix clear? Um, the clears that I'm talking about with any color line? The answer is yes, you can. Because all color lines, even though they're not completely compatible with the, uh, sometimes they're dependent on certain developers, but that's built into the system. However, the dyes are universal. We all use the same dyes um, and we all lighten hair in the same way. And uh, those of us that create um, uh, lightning products or bleaching products um, generally uh, uh, create them in the same way. Um, yes, Vincent, diluting it does make it level six, seven, and eight. Um, and uh, Vincent asked uh, when I was diluting the color, how, how much did it dilute to? Uh, Rebecca asked, in what situation would you dilute instead of dropping the level? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Um, Rebecca, why would I sometimes dilute and not drop a level? Let's say I don't have a lighter level in that particular tone of color that I want. Uh, not everybody, not all color lines uh, contain a level five or a level six, uh, excuse me, a level six or a level seven or a level eight in um, uh, in beiges, in um, in red violets, in uh, uh, red oranges. So consequently, diluting it is another way of creating a level. Um, 
that you did, would not normally have. And Stephanie is asking, is there a general rule for formulas and ratios for diluting color? Yes, there absolutely is. For every 15 grams of clear, you add to 45 grams of color, that color jumps up one level. And it's because you're simply diluting the color in a larger amount of uh, a base. And, and that's exactly how we make hair color. We, we uh, uh, go back to the last webinar where I had the color chart um, with the concentrations in each level. And you can see that um, all that we do is we simply add more of the same color to each level and to create the next um, uh, the next level. Um, uh, Tristan is asking, um, the RV concentrate, is it just your blue and red mixed? Um, it can, oh, okay, let me talk about this, this slide uh, right here in front of us. Um, first of all, these are full strength concentrates on the left. And you'll look at them and you'll see this is neutral. This is gold and it doesn't look like gold. It looks like almost a, a, a dark brown color. Here you have red, here you have blue and here you have green. Now, let me explain how concentrates are created. They're all created in the same way that neutral concentrate is created. And the way that I created them is um, one um, mole. We measure hair color uh, in units, in molar units, when we're determining the levels that we see. So if you mix one mole of resorcinol, excuse me, one mole of PPD, which is what we make brown color from, with one mole of resorcinol, which is one of the chemicals that we, the couplers that we use, you create a level two brown color. Now you adjust that brownness, whether it's greenish brown or reddish brown or, or um, uh, bluish brown by intermixing different couplers, but still only one dye. Now, the way that we created the gold is by taking um, the chemical, and I think in this case it was, um, um, oh, I can't remember it. Um, it's, it's, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't remember um, I'll have to pull out a chart to, sh to look at it. Hold on one second here while I pull this color chart. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Now, I took, um, p toluene diamine, which is an, which is, uh, another, um, uh, another dye. And I mixed it with multiple, um, couplers to give me that golden appearance. Um, but it is as dark as the level two um, neutral that you see. And the reason is so that all of these come out the same. Now you look at the red one and this red one was also created by using uh, one mole of color, one mole of total mole of uh, uh, couplers. And so, and, but if you look at it, it only appears visually to be about a level four or five. Then you look at this blue and it appears to be a three. And then the green appears to be um, a, a level four, a level five, somewhere around there, I don't know. But it doesn't matter what they appear to be. They're all created equally. And because they're created equally, even though they don't look the same visually, chemically, they are the same. Consequently, I can take it and dilute them into a much, into 60 grams of clear, and then only four grams of concentrate. And what I end up with 
is that in this case, I end up with uh, eight neutral, eight gold, whoops, eight neutral, eight gold, uh, level eight green, level eight red, level eight blue, level eight blue green, violet, and, and purple. And, and the reason that I have two different red, I made red and blue to make it violet, but then I also have a red violet because I simply took 2RV and diluted it because it's a level two color. And consequently, I was able to get all of these different level eight colors. Now, if I had, in fact, instead of using four grams of concentrate, had used six grams of concentrate, every one of these would be a dark blonde instead of being um, um, a light brown, excuse me, a, a, a light blonde. If I had used 10 grams of concentrate, every one of these would be a light brown. Now there's a chart that's uh, in the color manual that explains all of this and how the levels are achieved. And these, these concentrates can be used in any color brand whatsoever, no matter, uh, no matter who makes it. Um, Stephanie asked, does uh, a PPD derivative affect the color? Yes, it does. Um, as a matter of fact, it's a PPD derivative uh, that people are using when they say that their color has no uh, PPD in it. They're using a derivative of PPD to create the browns. Unfortunately, they can't create as, as deep and richer brown, and they tend to last a little bit less time, particularly if they're mixed with uh, ethanolamine. Uh, Oh, this is fascinating. Rebecca asked a question. Um, um, hi, Luke. Rebecca asked a question. She's asking, how does adding two colors that are the same level become a lighter level? Example, if you're using 50 cc's of ADEN and adding uh, 50, 15 grams of 8RO, Uh, is not a well, I think she's asking why isn't it a level eight? Here's the reason why, um, Rebecca. All color, no matter who makes it anywhere in the world, is created the same way. It's created by putting, adding more developer, excuse me, by adding um, more color to the base. And so the more color you add, the deeper the color becomes. Now, in this case, even though I took a level two color, I, there's only four grams of it, of the level two color. Remember, four grams of level two, dil again, diluted into uh, uh, 60 grams of clear. So the level even though I started out with level two concentrate, it has diluted the four grams of it into all the clear. And four grams are the equivalent amount that we would have if we were working with straight level eight color. Consequently, the neutral, um, the neutral concentrate, this one way over here, neutral concentrate when diluted in clear and is only four grams of it becomes 8N. I know it's confusing, but um, um, there's, a, there's a whole chapter. Um, uh, let me see. Diluting color is bleaching, creating on the scalp. There's an, there's an entire chapter in the book on how that it works. And it is um, skin depth breaking the base, mixing level versus working level. Uh, page 45 in the book explains in depth how, um, how it all happens.
Okay. Okay. Um, Jody is saying they she has one clear gloss in our liquid acidic demi line. Okay, so I'm assuming, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming you're talking about shades uh, because shades claims that it's acidic. Um, and if you put it into permanent color, remember that the more that you put in, the less light, the less, not only will you have less color, you'll have a lighter level, but you will also have less lightning out of that color. Oh, Jody said no. It's it's Davinus. I I didn't I didn't realize that their demi line they claim is acidic. I'm not sure um, how they do that um, because you need uh, in order for um, in order for a, a color line to be permanent and uh, uh, permanent dyes, you generally need in a um, uh, alkaline environment. I'll explain a little bit further in, into the uh, conversation today. And um, Tristan is asking uh, if Olaplex dilutes the formula. No, it does not. Um, because Olaplex is, uh, first of all, you're using very little of it in the color. And uh, secondly, it's, uh, I think the maximum you generally use is six or seven grams. Um, uh, which means you would dilute it less. It just simply makes it a slightly more translucent version of itself. Uh, Jody once again is saying that the Demi line, they have a low ammonia permanent line. Um, all permanent lines have the same ammonia Demi. It's around 1% or a little bit less. Um, uh, um, I, I, I don't know what theirs is. I'd have to, I'll have to look into it. Um, uh, and Vincent says, I don't understand what, you, what that means, Vincent. It's higher than normal, but just under neutral. Um, Sophia, does mixing any two different colors uh, make the color lighter? Yes, it does. Um, so, uh, guys, hold on with all these questions. I'm, we have a lot to cover here. Um, um, I will answer Vincent's question, though, about different levels of ammonia. Some color lines give you the same amount of ammonia in all uh, levels. Some uh, have differentiated amounts of, of ammonia, depending upon the level. Um, I choose to have different uh, amounts of ammonia by levels, um, uh, and it's done in the manufacturing part. Um, so hold on, uh, hold on to your questions, uh, uh, Stephanie. Um, I'll get to all of them in just a second. Uh, lots of good questions, though. Um, okay, concentrates right. So diluting color. So um, I got way off track here. So first, let me speak about peroxides. Then I'm going to go back and answer all your questions. Um, first of all, uh, starting with peroxides. In our hair industry, hydrogen peroxide is known by many different names. Some people call it energizer. Some people call it generator, infuser, oxidizer, developer, and many, many more names. However, they're all hydrogen peroxide. And uh, the chemical formula for hydrogen peroxide is simply H2O2. That's all, it's two, two hydrogen uh, molecules and two oxygen molecules. H2O is water, you add an extra molecule, and it becomes an extra molecule of oxygen, and it becomes peroxide. It has two purposes in coloring hair. Now, the first one, it, it's responsible for lightening natural hair color. Now, look at this once again. Peroxide is responsible for lightening natural hair color, not ammonia like so many people have been taught over the years. The secondly, 
is it's responsible for depositing the new hair color. And it does this through a process of uh, um, where the dyes are slightly changed by the addition of peroxide, and then they're allowed to couple with the, the coupler that gives the dye its tone. And the amount of dye is dependent upon the, uh, the, amount, uh, the amount of, the level of color is dependent upon the amount of dye that's included um, in the formula. But peroxide also has a negative effect. It is responsible for much of the damage that's created during the coloring process. Once again, peroxide is responsible for creating damage. The higher the volume of the peroxide, you do get more lightning from a formula. You also get faster dye development up to a point. And the reason I say up to a point is because most people are not aware that the, as you leave higher volumes of peroxide on the hair for longer periods of time, the peroxide eats up the dye, the color that it just deposited. Also, the higher the volume of peroxide, the greater the amount of damage. Consequently, 10 volume developer gives you less damage than 20, then or 30 or 40. And 40 volume developer is, gives you a maximum amount of damage, particularly when you're using high lift blondes and they're mixed with double developer. Now we used to have in the salons, uh, we could purchase uh, 60 uh, volume developer uh, because there was one hair color brand um, that recommended using it under certain circumstances. And we used to also be able to purchase 100 volume peroxide. And that 100 volume peroxide was, there were formulas many, many years ago for mixing a very small amount of 100 volume developer in with the color formula so that the, the, you would still have the equivalent of 20 volume. However, you would have much more deposit of color because it was much more concentrated color. It also tended to cause more irritation of the scalp. Now here's what I've done is here, this, is, this was the, the pure white hair. And what I did here was I took five volume, 10, 20, 30, and 40 volume developer. And I mixed it with the color and then only processed it for a short period of time. In this case, what I did was I only processed each one of these for uh, 10 minutes. But look at what happens. With five volume developer, and I, and I started out and I was using um, uh, three N again. So what you can see here is that even though I only used five volume developer, and here I used 10 volume developer, I still got deposit in only 10 minutes. However, I, although I was using a medium brown color, it still didn't reach anywhere near its potential of medium brown using the five or 10 volume for 10 minutes. But you can see that I did deposit more color. And the, the higher the volume of developer, the more color was deposited in each case. And you can see here that in 10 minutes, it still is not medium brown, uh, 3N, what I was using. But what you can see is that I deposited much, much more color in the same amount of time than I did when I was mixing just five volumes.
alkalizers. So we use three alkalizers primarily. Well, in hair color worldwide, we use three, uh, three alkalizers. We use ammonia um, in the form of ammonium hydroxide. Um, we use ethanolamine, also known as MEA, and aminomethylpropanol, also known as AMP. Now, the alkalizers are necessary to produce an alkaline pH, which swells the hair, and then it allows the dye to penetrate into the hair. Now, some dyes need an alkaline environment to develop. Um, if, the, if you don't have an alkaline developed um, environment, um, sometimes it's necessary to add um, direct dyes or um, preformed dyes to a formula in, in order to get um, color. Now, uh, both ammonium hydroxide and ethanolamine um, work with the peroxide to produce lightning. But aminomethylpropanol, AMP up here, is not very effective when mixed with peroxide for lightening the hair. First of all, let's start with ammonia or ammonium hydroxide. Most, uh, it's the most used alkalizer in permanent hair coloring products. Um, ammonia has a molar weight of 16, 17, um, 0 0.031 grams per mole, which is a, a amount of molecules. Uh, but in hair coloring, it appears as ammonium hydroxide, with, uh, and it has a molar weight of 35.046 uh, grams per mole. It has two functions in the coloring pro process. It creates the pH of the product, which causes the hair to swell and then allows the dyes to, to, to penetrate. Secondly, it catalyzes the peroxide to make it more effective lightning agent. Now, without peroxide, uh, a, excuse me, Without ammonia mixed with peroxide, peroxide is not very good at lightening the hair all by itself. Even 20, 30, 40 volume is not very good um, at lightening the hair. But as soon as you put a small amount of peroxide in, excuse me, um, um, ammonia uh, in it, it becomes much more effective and lightens the hair a lot, a lot. It's not the ammonia that lightens the hair, it's the peroxide, but the ammonia catalyzes the peroxide and makes it more efficient. Uh, once you um, uh, wash the hair at the end of a color service, the ammonia is completely eliminated from the hair once it's washed. Now, ethanolamine, also known as MEA, is used both in permanent and non-ammonia hair color and in permanent, uh, excuse me, in demi-permanent color. It has a molar weight of 61.08 grams. Now, once again, it's used in permanent non-ammonia hair color and in demi-permanent hair color. It is, however, a derivative of ammonia. And it's created by the reaction of ammonia and ethylene oxide. Um, it's done in a, in, in a lab um, or in a big factory. You can't do this at home. It's a very viscous liquid and it does smell like ammonia. However, when it's mixed in with the product um, and the product is thicker, you don't smell. It doesn't tend to have quite the same uh, 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 smell as, um, as regular ammonia. It acts the same when it's substituted for ammonia in permanent uh, hair color, but you have to have a higher concentration. And the higher concentration means that instead of being 1%, which is um, generally what the ammonia content is 
uh, in uh, level eight, nine, and 10 hair color, you, uh, when you're using um, uh, MEA, uh, ethanolamine, you, you have to have anywhere from three to 8% um, uh, in order for it to be not quite as effective as the ammonia. And remember what I said, it's not as effective for catalyzing the ammonia. What this means in real terms is that you see less lightning from the same peroxide when you're mixing it with ethanolamine, MEA, instead of ammonia. Once again, this means that if you have two products that are mixed with 20 volume developer, one contains ethanolamine and one contains ammonia. The one with ammonia will lighten the hair more. Now, ethanolamine is more difficult to remove from the hair. And a lot of the time, particularly if you're not really conscientious at the shampoo bowl, there's a residue left in the, in, that's uh, in the hair and it requires multiple washings to remove it. But when you use MEA in a demi-permanent product, it lightens the natural hair color. And you've all seen this because if you use what's known as a demi-permanent color in the hair and it, and it eventually fades from the hair, you see a line of demarcation. The line of demarcation means that whatever it is you put on the hair lightened the natural hair color. But then you have AMP, amino methylpropanol. Um, it, has, it has a molar weight of 89.13. Now, it's not a derivative of ammonia and it's a much larger molecule. So consequently, you end up with no perceivable lightening of the hair. It means there might be a tiny little bit, but you, you, you can't see it 99 point percent of the time unless it is extremely fine hair. And then you might see a little bit. It's very effective uh, as an alkalizer when you use it in toners demi-permanent colors and deposit only colors, except if it's in a demi-permanent color, then it's no longer demi-permanent. It's then deposit only, unless the demi has preformed colors in it and they fade from the hair. Um, AMP, amino methylpropanol, washes from the hair and does not leave a residue. Damage to the hair. I want to talk about damage to the hair and I want to talk uh, about a bunch of different types of damage to the hair. First of all, damage to the hair from peroxide. The higher the volume of peroxide is the damage is directly proportional to the strength of the peroxide. Consequently, remember I said it earlier, a 20 volume developer damages hair less than 40 volume developer. The higher the developer um, strength, the increased damage to the hair. The second thing that damages the hair is the pH of a product. The higher the pH of a product, the more swelling of the cuticle and the cortex of the hair. C is perming solutions. Perming solutions are damaging to the hair. They break the disulfide bonds that hold the fibers of the hair together and neutralizing does not reform the full number of bond, bonds, thus, um, uh, the hair is left in a damaged state. And if you do repeated permings on the hair, you end up with fewer and fewer reformed vines. 
and then uh, straighteners and relaxing products. Because they have very high pH, um, uh, these products, uh, straighteners and relaxers, do excessive swelling and the disulfide bonds are broken. So straighteners and relaxers are really some of the most damaging to the hair when they're used improperly. There are ways of using straighteners and relaxers that are less damaging to the hair. And that's by another topic altogether. Now, when you're processing hair with chemicals, some damage is, in is inevitable. However, it doesn't have to be severe. Severe damage is also the result of the following. Once again, I always put developer strength up top because the stronger the developer, the more, the more um, damage. But then look here at B, repeated pull through of a chemical and to refresh, to refresh the shaft and ends. Now here's what happens when you, when you pull a permanent color through the shaft and ends, you, you are most of the time continuing to lighten that hair a little bit more and you're creating more porosity. So the more lightening you do on the hair and the more porosity that you've created by pulling permanent color through the shaft and ends every time, you, the color fades faster. However, there's another thing that can cause an, um, a damage, chemical damage, and that's allowing a chemical to process too long. It can cause destruction of the color itself. Over processing time, in other words, if you time something for too long, you can over lighten the hair, yes, but not only do you destroy the chemical bonds, you increase the fading factor and, and you have, what you have done is you have caused too much porosity. I said that earlier. You destroyed more of the disulfide bonds because the higher the volume of developer, the more bonds are broken and the more bonds that are broken and the more porosity that is, in, that is created you increase the fading factor. But what I didn't process, what I didn't put here is that not only do higher volumes of developer destroy the internal chemical bonds of the hair, they also eat away at the cuticle layer on the outside of the hair. The higher the volume of peroxide, the more it eats away at the cuticle layer and the cuticle layer becomes more damaged and less shiny. And you, once again, you increase the fading factor. Processing with heat, particularly drier heat that is too hot, can cause a whole bunch of things. First of all, they can cause severe burning of the scalp. It can cause over lightening of the hair. It can cause excessive damage to the structure of the hair. Remember, I'm talking about processing with too high of a, a heat. It can cause breakage and can increase the probability of an allergic reaction. All of these things happen when you put color under a hot dryer. You increase the, the possibility of severe burning of the scalp. And how many times have you seen someone in the salon put a bleach under a dryer to speed it up and they end up with these huge um, burn spots in the scalp and the hair falls out. Be particularly careful of dryer's heat. Now, the last thing that it says here is, um, 
um, using the wrong product. And for instance, this means um, refreshing color with a permanent color, which causes more damage, particularly if it's mixed with ammonia or uh, ethanolamine, instead of using a deposit only color with AMP. Remember, when you refresh hair color with permanent color, even though you don't intend it, even though it's lathered with water or shampoo or anything else, you're increasing the damage to the hair and you're increasing the fading factor. Oh, here, I said this earlier. Damage happens not only to the external cuticle layer, but also to the internal cortex of the hair. When hair is treated with an alkaline product, both the cuticle and the cortex swell. Read that sentence again. When the hair is treated with an alkaline product, both the cuticle and the cortex swell. But when the hair is neutralized, uh, either using a neutralizing shampoo or you, um, you, you shampoo the hair and um, you bring the pH down with a conditioner, the cuticle deswells. However, the cortex can remain up to 20% swollen. Now this we refer to often as when you create body. Now, remember that we, there used to be products in the marketplace. I don't know if they still exist, but um, you, would, you would put them, you would shampoo them into the hair, rinse them out, and your hair would have more body. But if you did it repeatedly, instead of having more body, the hair actually became damaged. And that was because they were intended to be used only one time. And the way that they work generally was that they, they were a higher alkaline um, a shampoo type product that swelled the hair and left it in a little bit of a swollen state when it was all done. That's how they worked. But you can also get damage from a flat iron or a curling iron. And here's where it, here's the reason why. At 302 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 150 degrees centigrade, that's when the moisture is driven out. So you know that when you put um, uh, uh, curling iron or um, even if it's on dry hair, you see a little bit of uh, smoke come out. That smoke is generally moisture. You're driving out what moisture was left in the hair. But what you don't realize is that, oh, again, what you don't realize is that when you raise the temperature up to 320 degrees, if the hair is fine, all the way up to 347 degrees, if the hair is coarse, this is when you begin to melt the actual protein that is inside the hair. Now, if you're using um, an iron, uh, whether it's a flat iron, a curling iron, whatever it is, and you're warming it through the hair, uh, but you're only leaving it on for a second, then you're generally not raising up to these super high temperatures. But when you hold it in place, that's when you start getting up to where you begin to do irreversible damage. Irreversible damage is when you're using a really hot iron and you hold it on the hair. And that irreversible damage starts at around 419 degrees Fahrenheit for finer textured hairs and goes up to about 455 degrees Fahrenheit for coarse textured hair. Remember, this is when you hold the uh, flat iron or the curling iron in place for too long of a time. And what you end up doing is causing irreversible damage to the hair. You can actually cause um, the hair to change its shape 
by holding it in place for longer periods of time and you can flatten the, um, the hair out and cause cracks to appear in the actual structure of the hair. Now there's, an, uh, there's another type of damage and it's by destructive manipulation of the hair. So this means when the hair is teased, when the hair is pulled, when you, when you pull a comb or a brush forcefully through the hair, in other words, you're tugging on the hair, trying to get it uh, to go through because the, there's some tangles in the hair. <coughs> Excuse me. That's um, doing damage, it's breaking the hair. But also, when you pull color through the mid shaft and ends of the hair, and you're using a comb, and the comb isn't one of those big wide tooth combs, or you're not using the back of the comb to, to, to push the color through, then what you can end up doing by using a smaller, a smaller teeth comb is by literally shredding the hair and ripping the cuticle layer. The cuticle layer is particularly um, uh, vulnerable to being torn off the hair when it's in an alkaline state, when we have hair color or any other chemical on the, the hair, any other alkaline chemical on the hair. And then last, I think, oh, okay. So I'm gonna go back to answer all your questions in a second here. Um, part four uh, will be coming up and I'll put up the, uh, uh, on Facebook, uh, for everyone to hook into it. And what we're going to be talking about in part four is uh, the ingredients that are in hair color and what each ingredient is for. We're going to talk about dyes and couplers and uh, what they actually do and how we create different hair colors and the differences that you find in, in um, um, uh, pure tone hair colors and, um, and uh, blended hair colors. Um, we're gonna talk about lightning creams, the different type of lightning creams that are available. And we're gonna talk about on the scalp lighteners. Now, all of these are going to take place in uh, segment four. And we'll spend a lot, quite a bit of time on all four of these topics. And then last but not least, Oh, I hit it the wrong way once again. Anyone who's taking part in this series of webinars, you will automatically become a member of the Worldwide Hair Colors Association if you choose to. You don't have to if you don't want to. Tomorrow, everyone who was hooked up either today or last week will receive an email on how to join the Worldwide Hair Colors Association at no cost. Now, if you're already a member, please do not duplicate your membership. Um, the association was formed back in December of 1996. I think that means this December, I think that means we're going to be 25 years old this year. We have literally thousands of members um, from all around the world using just about every hair color you can think of. There's, uh, there's no requirements. Anyone can join, providing you're a colorist. Uh, we don't do any cutting webinars. We don't do um, any other chemicals, but we only um, talk about hair color. Uh, we hold, uh, we hold um, national events. Now, we haven't held one in uh, more than two years because of COVID. Um, um, we're planning on one for this fall. I'm trying to make arrangements um, uh, in Las Vegas for this year's event. And then one last thing, and that is this. For anybody who's interested, there's my book, my newest book becoming a master colorist uh, inside the US, just go to tomdispenza.com. Uh, if you're outside of the US, you have to purchase it on Amazon. 